Hi, everybody. I am here with Lori, who is an amazing career professional in a very interesting line of work. Lori is a mortician, and I'm so glad that you came and you're willing to chat with us a little bit about this industry that I feel like is largely unknown. You know, we don't really have a lot. I don't have a lot of knowledge about it. So I'm really excited to talk to you and get the low down, the low down on what it's like to be a mortician. So why don't you start by just giving me a brief summary of your work history in your, in your field. Perfect. Well, thanks for having me on. I'm so glad to be here today with you. I, um, work at a funeral home. I started in 2004 with my parents. We started a little startup funeral home and uh, my dad owned a traditional funeral home. And so he decided that he would start with a little bit different model um, where we didn't have a large funeral home that's connected to um, any type of cemetery or anything like that, that we would just offer um, some simple services for people that didn't need a big facility. So we started in 2004, um, we've grown really well. We started a bigger, we built a bigger building and put a crematory on site here at our funeral home in 2005 or 15, sorry. And um, I've worked with my parents and I love my job. And I went to school to become a mortician because I actually enjoyed the work so much with my parents. Okay, that's awesome. So do you think you would have been interested in this field or even thought of it had you not had that connection? Probably if I didn't have the connection with my father, no, I probably wouldn't have. When I actually went through high school, they give you that test where you get to decide what you should grow up when you grow up, what you'll be. Yeah. And was on there and I was like oh heck no that is not <laughs> me that, I'm like, that, I have nothing to do with that that's not going to be me but um I probably wouldn't have but as I got introduced into it I started as doing the books as a bookkeeper and then it just kind of kept coming growing a little bit more every year and I kept getting more interested and more interested in it to the point where I finally decided later in life that I would go to school to become a mortician because I enjoyed working with the people. Wow, that's awesome. I see this all the time, people that have preconceived ideas about certain fields or certain industries and really never even try. And so often career paths are just determined by what you're exposed to. And so that's part of my mission and what I'm doing right now is trying to increase that exposure so people can have a better understanding of what it's like. Um, to work in different areas. So why don't you tell me a little bit about um, the parts of your work that you enjoy the most? You just briefly mentioned working with people. Why don't you um, expound a little bit on that? So I think, so for a little bit of background, my, when I refer to my father, it's my stepfather. My father passed away when I was 16 and my mom was left as a single mom. Um, and I watched her go through that process of dealing with a funeral home and um, being exposed to it and looking at the challenges that come after we deal with what we deal with as the funeral. Um, and it really touched my heart as I started working at the funeral home to realize that I wanted to be there to help people work through that process. Where I went through it so young and watching my mother go through it, it really was a calling to me to really want to reach out to people and work with families to help them. And that is one thing that I love about my job. If more than anything is just interacting with people. When I sit down with families, uh, my favorite question that I ask a couple is I'll say, where did you meet your spouse? And to hear the stories that they tell is makes my day that is the best thing in the world that you could ever ask and it gives me a personal connection to see it changes that moment when i'm working with that family it just it breaks all barriers and it takes them back to a moment that was so happy when they met their spouse and that and so that was really what i wanted to do i really wanted that calling to work with and help with people awesome that that's something i wouldn't have thought of you know, so 
when you meet with people, why don't you kind of explain a little bit about the process of what a mortician does, just because I feel like maybe a lot of people don't know. Sure. When I, when you asked me to do this interview, I was thinking about it. I'm like, what, how do you sum up what a funeral home is or a mortuary? And the best thing I ever heard one day, is like planning, a funeral is like planning a wedding, but in three days. Um, and so we help families from the beginning. So from the time that they pass, we help them determine what kind of services they are. Um, if it's going to be for a cremation service, if it's going to be for a burial, if they're going to have a viewing, if they're going to have a church service, we sit down to help them determine that. Then we help them with placing obituaries in the paper, arranging for facilities for them to have services, to receptions, to working and coordinating with ministers and cemeteries. Um, there is a lot of dynamics that go into a funeral and we help families go through that from the beginning to the end. Okay. Yeah. See, in my mind, a mortician is like a lab coat job, but it's, it's really not. I mean, it, yeah. it's very personal. It sounds like much more personal than well, and I think um, there's two, the, in this day and age, I think people kind of go with, they'll say a funeral director, a funeral director and a mortician. So there's two different career paths that a person could take. A funeral director just takes care of the family, the services and the arrangements and meets with the family. A mortician does everything a funeral director does, but they also do the aspect of taking care of the person as far as the preparation for embalming, dressing, and doing all those things above and beyond that. So there are two paths that you can go in the funeral industry. You can, if you're like, hmm, I'm not really sure I want to deal with, or I don't feel like I'm capable of taking care of that more preparation part of it, I can be a funeral director and just deal with the family aspect of it and taking care of the planning of the services. Okay, that's good to know. So there's kind of two different tracks that you can kind of take. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges that you feel like are part of your position? What are some of the things that are difficult? I think challenges in this business are um, helping people decipher what they can do and uh, what they can afford. I think um, I sometimes, my personal opinion, I feel that more to funerals or mortuaries kind of got a bad rap um, in the early years when they felt like people would come in and people would charge all these prices for these expensive funerals that people couldn't afford, um, where I think you have a responsibility as a funeral director or a mortician to sit down with a family and say, what would you like to do? And you have the obligation to, to give them the pricing at the beginning of the appointment to help them determine what they can do and what the costs are so people know what those decisions are up front so they can make an informed financial decision um, and accomplish their goals within a reasonable budget. That's, that's a personal thing that I feel that people need to do in this business. So, Yeah, and I can see how that could be a challenge. Um, is there a difference between working for like a big corporate type funeral home that's like a bigger part of a big network or you know, more of a smaller? Well, I can tell you, I've never worked for a corporation. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so I can't really comment on the corporation. Do they side have big ones? Canada. I mean, are there big chains? Oh, sure. Yep. There are, there are corporations that have come in and they buy up, they own like four funeral homes in a certain town, or, you know, they own funeral homes across America. And then there's still what we call the mom and pop. So, um, and there are, I think there are benefits and challenges. As a business owner, I can say to you, um, obviously, if you're a corporation, you have a little bit more of a protection or, you know, an umbrella to kind of keep the finances and things going. As a personal, as a small business owner, you're going to have more challenges because it's on you. You know, it's me. I don't have, if somebody in one area doesn't do great one month, that another area did good to balance out those books. It's just me that relies on that. Right. So, and I think in a corporation world, they probably are a little bit more compartmentalized. So if you work in a bigger area, you probably could have a little, 
bit of a more of a designated job. So for instance, here, we do it all from the beginning to, you know, from the time that somebody passes to the time somebody is buried. That's all on us. I don't have, you know, one place that does, for instance, when I went to school, um, the corporation that we went to work with, they had different areas. So they only had certain people that just did took care of the preparation portion and one group of people that took care of meeting with people. And then they had another group that took care of like the cars and all that. So um, I think in a corporation that is, you know, if you just want to do one part of it and you were going to look for a job, that's probably a good idea if you wanted just to focus on one aspect or if you live in a big city, that's what you might run into. If you work in a smaller town or if you go to work for a, a family owned funeral home, you're going to end up doing everything. Mm. And I think that's probably true for most industries across the board, smaller company, you have more duties, a, a bigger variety of duties than a bigger corporation. Well, okay. and I think there's one good thing about that though, is that if you're in a smaller corporation, you get, a, you get to see all sorts of aspects. You get to do something different every day. You know, you're not feeling like you're just drudging along. So, but- Yeah, uh, for sure. And you can expand your experience. Sure. So, then if you decide eventually that there's one portion that you want to focus on, then you already have some experience to sure. make transition or something. Yeah. Okay. And what do you see any changes coming in funeral home services or that industry? Well, I think this year COVID has yeah. woken up the, for us. It's been different. It's hard. You know, I think yeah. that, um, you know, services are reduced because of our numbers. We can't have large groups like we used to. We can't have a traditional funeral like we used to. So we have to a little bit be more creative. So therefore we're doing a lot more like live streaming or smaller services or people are doing a little bit, to, they'll do a cremation and then they'll hold on to the urn in hopes that when COVID breaks up that things will be able to have a service in the summer. So I do think there are changes. I think it's a fluid every day, you know, how things go depending on what's happening in the world right now. But I think that one thing that has really changed over the past few years is that cremation has really started to tick, tick up, you know, people that is people's choice. And I think that uh, there's a reason for that is that we don't uh, grow up in one community anymore and live there our whole lives like we used to with our parents and have a family owned cemetery. I think we're moving a little bit more with our jobs. We have to be a little bit more flexible of where we go for work. So I think that's the nice thing about cremation is you can take your loved one with you where you go. You're not leaving if right. you're not you have to move. So yeah, right. I think that's changing. Yeah. I've noticed I've noticed several of those things just in my circle of people I know choosing to hold on to the urn and do it later. And and a lot of times, as we've seen with COVID, a lot of these patterns that start, it'll be interesting to see what continues to stay, you know, after some of this settles. Oh, for sure. I think that will be true. I think that a lot of those things are going to, I mean, we were already in, what is it? Take a habit, takes 30 days to build a habit, yeah. you know, and we're here <laughs> times 10 so yeah. far. You know, so on that. <laughs> yeah, that's what we'll get used to. That will be our norm for sure. Yeah. So what skills that, you know, do you think you need to be successful as a mortician, as a funeral director? If you could just kind of describe some of the things that you like to see in somebody that is um, applying or that you feel like you had to develop in order to do well. I think the biggest thing is communication. I think you have to be able to communicate with people. I don't think you necessarily have to learn, you have sympathy, but you've got to empathize with people. You have to be able to understand where they're at in a situation and don't take it personal. And so I think that's a big thing in this job is you have to be able to communicate with your families and not take it personal. I think that was one thing for me when I started young, I was kind of like, hey, how's it going? You know, yeah. <laughs> how are you today? 
not a good question in this business. Right. You know, it's a hard day for people. And so when people would say things to me that I felt were kind of um, not, not mean, but just, you know, they would like correct me. I had to learn that I had to have empathy for them to realize, hey, you you're in, they're in a different place than you are. And you've got to learn to be able to adjust to that and to be able to communicate with people. Don't take it personal. And that's a big thing. I love when people come in to want to be here, that they, that they have a passion for why they want to be here and that they are able to communicate with what, um, they're, communicate how they feel, but also understand how other people feel and how you want them to interact with people in an appropriate manner. I think that's the biggest thing is that you just have to be able to communicate. Yeah. I think other skills that I would say, um, gotta be flexible. I always tell people one thing is, is uh, funeral industry is when you're getting ready for a silver service, I feel like you get there, get everything set up and then you gotta be patient. It's, it's their time, it's not our time, it's their time. And you can't, you just gotta learn to have a flexibility in your life and understand that you might be there for 10 minutes, you might be there for an hour, you might, you know, but that's, that's what you, if you go into it knowing that, then you'll be okay. Mm. Yeah, and you're, I, I love that you bring up empathy because that's sort of what you describe, have been describing all throughout this and so if you're somebody that that comes natural to you, that you naturally have a lot of empathy for people, this would be a great profession to consider because you have you already have a gift for that and ability to, um, I guess, meet them where they are and understand what they're going through and um, be able to, I guess, see things from their perspective. So sure. yeah, you really have to be able to stand back and and look at it through their perspective. And you also have to be able to help them decipher. I think that's part of that communication is help to decipher what they are communicating to you that they need and understand that. So knowing so, the questions to ask, like you talked about before and- Right. And being able to make sure you're on the same page and you're understanding what they're saying and what they need. Yeah. And I wouldn't say if you don't feel you're a good communicator, not to apply for a job at a funeral home or not to, I think you will develop that. I mean, every day I probably come to work and I'm like, well, that wasn't, I probably shouldn't have said it that way. Yeah. Right. But, and you learn, but I think if you can understand and step back and go, oh, I can understand that yeah. you know, and take that moment and learn from it. I think that's the big thing. And you do have to be detail oriented. You have to be able to follow a list make a list and follow it. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to be type A, but you have to be able to follow a list and follow through those details. You know, they only get to have a funeral one time. You only get to get married one time. So we want to make sure that we accomplish what they are asking us to do and not forget to do things. Right. Right. Yeah. I can imagine that would be very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that. Thank you. Um, why don't you describe how work-life balance is? for this field? Work-life balances. So I have four <laughs> children yeah. and um, I have 21, 17, 15, and four. So work-life balance, I, you have to make your family a priority. I mean, you could work 24 seven in this business, but it doesn't mean that you have to. I think you just have to prioritize what you have to do if your family has something I've learned in the past by my own mistakes, you have to block out a time and go do that. So um, work-life balance is hard and it can wear on you. I think um, the average mortician I heard at one time, and I don't know what it is now, they have a burnout rate at about five years. And I think it's because one emotional drain is hard and two, the lifestyle, it can be pretty hard. Working for a corporation, you'd probably be a little bit better as far as um, maybe keeping that clock a little bit more in nine to five or that 40 hour work week, maybe not Monday through Friday, but you know, a variation. But I think when you work um, as independents, you have to really make sure that you take care of yourself and 
schedule that time. If you're scheduled to go out of town, you go out of town. You just have to figure it out. But well, and let's be honest, um, almost any job these days, you can work 24 seven. I mean, sure. That's really not exclusive to your industry. So, right. I mean, I think work-life balance more and more is becoming something that you know, it's sort of elusive that you just have to claim yourself, but it is a job. This is a field that you can't work remote. I mean, no. you've got to be there. So. Yep. You got to be there. And, um, people pass away at all times of the day and night. So I just, you just have to make sure that you take care of yourself. I think it's like you said, any job, you've got to make sure that you have self-care if you're going to be happy, if your family's going to be happy. Sure. And if things are lined out, you're going to be happy in life and things are going to go well for you. You're going to be able to take care of your customers. You're going to be able to work good with your coworkers and you're going to be able to take care of your family and those obligations. So I would say if you are going to go into mortuary, just make sure you take time for yourself, you know, make sure that you take time for your family. That would be the most important thing that I think that I would give advice for is just do the things that you need to do for your family and yourself. Yeah, I love that. So is there any, do you have any other words of wisdom of something you wish you had known before you started this path? I think if looking back, if I would have known, I probably would have started earlier. Um, for my job, um, I went to school when I had three little kids and went to mortuary school. And so I think I probably would have started earlier. So I think if you get that test in high school that says that you should be a mortician, <laughs> and you feel it's your calling. Think about it. <laughs> think about it. Yeah, and do it when you are younger, because then I think you'll be able to establish yourself. You'll be able to find that job that's good for you, and then you're not trying to balance school life. No. But if you are a mother or a father, and you're sitting at home going, "Hey, I this could be my second career," I say go for it. There yeah. is a lot of good schools online that you can do. That's one good thing about this job is if you feel that it could be your passion, I would tell you one thing, go to a, a funeral home or a mortuary, ask them if they have a part-time job or a job that you could work into. And I would try to get into that uh, career path and see if it's something that you're going to love before you go to school. Because I think a lot of times what's happening now is and I don't know, you probably could tell me this in other careers, is people go to school, then they come to do their apprenticeship at a mortuary and they're like, oh, that wasn't for me, you yeah. know? And they've and, already spent all of this time and money. Sure, and then, you know, we spend time training people, which is important too. Sure. But I think that if you are going to do this job, I, that's the first thing I would be. And I don't care, you know, the great thing about being working in a mortuary, it doesn't matter your age. You know, you can start this job from high school to, you know, well into retirement. I mean, we have part-time people that just help with viewings, you know, because they just want to sit down here and they like the social aspect of it. They like helping with people. That's great. Yeah. You know? And so I've had, I was a mom, stay-at-home mom. My friend that works there, she was a stay-at-home mom. So, you know, I think that, and then we did both decided that it was great to be a mortician or go to be a funeral director. So I think that's the good thing about it. If that was my one advice back then, I would say start early or try to get in with a mortuary if that's your key and work at it. And don't let them tell you no, because you know I know a lot of times people come in like, no, we don't have anything. Say, I'll do anything. You know, Do you yeah. need help with whatever you need? Just put, keep my number. I'd love to be an extra set of hands because I think the more exposure you get to it, you're going to realize if it's really what you want to do. And I think that's with any job in life, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great advice. And I just had one other question. Is this a salary type of job or an hourly type of job? So it, most uh, funeral directors and mortu morticians are a salary job. So okay. any of the part-time work is, I would say, more hourly job. Um, and the good thing about it is, so to be a, a mortician in Idaho, you have to go to school, you have to have so many credits, and then you have to get your um, morticians. So for instance, I had 60 credits that I went, and it was classes like um, 
not organic chemistry, but I'm sorry, anatomy and physiology, right? Anatomy, physiology, accounting, um, business management, some of those classes I had to take prior to it before I went to my mortuary um, school. The other thing is, is that then I did an apprenticeship and then you can get your license. So that is the longer aspect of it. That's if you're gonna to want to take care of families from the beginning, do the preparation and everything. A funeral director doesn't have to have that many credits. It's those same classes, but then it's like, it was 16 credits, you know, just to become a funeral director. So, and then your apprenticeship. So it's pretty reasonable, it's easy to do. There's a lot of classes that are online. So even if you're working another job and you wanna start doing this, um on the side and start it's i think it's perfect for people to do it's a great job awesome well thank you so much i i feel like i learned so much today and you make being a mortician look totally fun and glamorous so i'm i love it and i really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and i think it's really going to be helpful for people and hopefully maybe open some people's minds and hearts to to consider this as a really great path for many sure. people. So. Well, I hope that people do that. And if anybody has any questions and they want to contact you and then you can get a hold of me, I'd love to give anybody any advice on whatever questions they have for different schoolings or a path if either way. And it really is a calling. I love my job. My husband says sometimes I'm like a SpongeBob. <laughs> I get to go to what he said, I get to go work, keep working, keep working. I <laughs> person that wakes up I swear happy to go to work but I do love my job I love dealing and helping with families and helping them get through um, a situation where they're in right now so thank awesome. you for the interview and I thank hope you, there is a demand for people to be in this field so I hope yeah that's can. right you were saying that it is there's a shortage so this is a yeah. great thing for people to consider yeah well, thank so you perfect. so much Thanks, Heather. This episode of Career Combos is brought to you by Aligned Ambition. If you're looking for help while preparing to enter the workforce, need tools to build your resume, or are looking for guidance in finding a career path that is a great fit for you and your personal strengths, click on the link in the show notes to learn more about what Aligned Ambition has to offer.